Hello and welcome to Today in the Word. We're so glad that you've joined us to talk about our March study on the New Testament book of Hebrews. Um, joining me today is our author, who should be a familiar name to you. Um, he's written many studies for us, and he is our theological editor. Some of you may not know that, um, but he reviews all of our studies to check them for biblical theological accuracy. And he writes a monthly column called Practical Theology, um, which I have right here. But if you um, haven't read this column, some of you may not get the print edition and you might be reading in your app or on the website. If you go to the Go Deeper resources section, you'll find his column. And so each month he writes on theology, uh, uh, some subject of theology related to the topic of the study. So all that to say that he's doing a lot of work. Um, he is a former professor at Moody Bible Institute, um, leading our pastoral ministries department and the author of many books, including his latest, um, When God is Silent, which is about prayer. So welcome, John. Hi, Jamie. Good to be with you. So the book of Hebrews, what do we need to know? What, what is, um, can you frame that a little bit for us? Yeah, Hebrews is one of those books where you we don't know a whole lot. We don't know who wrote it. We don't know that much about the people who received the letter that was written. So all of the information we have is sort of embedded in the book itself. You kind of have to read the book and look for clues. So um, it's, the author's not identified, but he the author is somebody that the recipients knew personally from comments that are made in the book. Hebrews uh, 10, 32 through 35 speaks of earlier days when these uh, individuals were exposed to insults and persecution. Mm. It, they supported others who were in prison uh, for their Christian faith, and presumably they were under pressure too. And based on the theme of the book, which is primarily has to do with uh, the Old Testament law, the Mosaic law, and the gospel, uh, we would probably describe those individuals today as Jewish Christians. So they're, they're, that's why it's the letter to the Hebrews. So it's written to people who were from uh, Hebrew background, practitioners, formerly practitioners of the law, who had come to Jesus Christ. And now we're wrestling with that. In fact, we're struggling with it probably because of some of these pressures and some of them were thinking about turning, going back to the old way rather than continuing on in Christ. Yeah. Our, we've titled the study a better way, which ties into that exact conflict. Right. And in your introduction, you talk about how these people had been raised one way to do things, you know, to do all of their traditions, all of what they'd studied and been convicted of, and then suddenly everything changed. Can you can you talk about that transition a little bit for um, for this audience? Yes. So imagine that you uh, you've the way that you have worshipped God your whole life, and it encompasses your whole life: what you eat, what you wear, how you schedule your week. Um, there are all of these. Uh, practices and observances that not only you have participated in, but your parents, your grandparents, you know, going back for many, many generations. And now suddenly all of that, you're told that all of that is done. You don't, you don't do that. You don't need to do that anymore. Uh, that would be very disorienting. And some of the questions I think that would come to your mind would be like, well, first of all, why? You know, why, why are we not? We used to have to bring these sacrifices. Why don't we have to bring these sacrifices anymore? Um, are you saying that that was wrong or or what? And so I think it would create for some people it would create a crisis of faith. And of course, in the context where the majority culture is, that you're part of is still observing those things, it puts you under pressure. Because yeah. they're considering that maybe you know there's something wrong with you. You're a heretic. You're you're not you're not following God the way that you should. So you would have questions about that. And I think that that's part of what the writer's doing. He wants them to understand 
how Jesus Christ is a better way hmm. to God. And but also not not in a way that denigrates what went before because it was the law. It was the, it was the law that God delivered to his Old Testament people. He's helping them to understand why this has changed. What what has happened? What has been God's plan all along? Hmm. Um, one of my favorite portions of Hebrews is the hall of, we've called it the hall of fame of faith hall of hall faith, of I fame. guess. Yeah. The faith hall of fame. That's better. Um, where, you know, we look at the lives of all of these different individuals from the old Testament who showed us what it means to live by faith. Um, why do you, why do you think this appears here in this book? Why was that an important chapter or section for these readers? Well, I think there are two reasons for it. One is that this is the writer's way of connecting this better way with the old way, because the people that he is bringing up in this uh, uh, hall of fame, all the people that he mentions, these are all people from the, the from their from their Bible. These are people who, uh, you know, beginning with Abraham, trust God. And they are made righteous by faith. And so he's he's doing two things. One, he's showing that they're not cutting off their past by, by coming to Christ. They're, they're reaching its fulfillment. But he also wants to show that all of these people that they look back to, that... Um, that they that others might point to to say, well, no, see, you you need to you need to stay with the, this way of approaching God that you knew before. They were all justified in the same way that it was faith that that and that also you're talking to people who are under pressure, who haven't uh, they've trusted in Christ. But they're still, you know, they're still in this walk of faith. They haven't reached the climax of it in that they're they're not in heaven. You know, they're still struggling on earth so that they're kind of in this in-between place where they haven't received all of the uh, the inheritance of faith. And the writer of Hebrews is pointing back to all of these who went before them, who also did not receive the full inheritance they received they were justified through faith they received promises and they kept on in their uh, persisted in faith and obedience uh, looking for the fulfillment later on and so he's, he's setting them up as an example as a, as a role model for these hebrew christians very good we um We've been doing children's versions of these studies, and some are more challenging, honestly, than others. Um, so for the Hebrew study, there is a children's go along study that um, you as parents can do with your kids, or even Sunday school teachers can take these downloadable lessons and use them to um, teach your children. So there's four lessons. Um, and so as you go through the book of Hebrews and you're gleaning information, um, it will help guide you on ways you can communicate some of these truths to kids because there are some really important key truths in here that um, your children will appreciate. So we encourage you to go do that today. If you go to todayintheword.org slash family or go to our website, you can download it. Um, as we, you know, this was written obviously to the Hebrews, but modern day readers, maybe even non-Jewish um, readers, what what do you, what can we gain from this? What should we take away from this book? Well, first of all, it is describing our own heritage as people of faith that that uh, God's promises do not begin with the New Testament. That, mm. that uh, uh, there's this rich tradition that Christ draws us, those of us who are. The Bible, the term that you find in the Bible that speaks to us, Gentiles, which, you know, we used to be foreigners and strangers to these promises. Hmm. Jesus brings us into that community of faith. So, number one, it helps us to understand ourselves, where this heritage comes from. I also think that this tendency to um, want to... Uh, 
do things to to create our own righteousness you know we we, we want to we want to uh, we want to we want it to be something that we earn we want it to be our own it's not unique to the people that the writer of Hebrews is addressing that that's a very human tendency we have a hard time accepting righteousness as a gift through a gift of grace through faith in Christ and so that it it, it helps us to uh, counter that tendency to see the uniqueness of the sacrifice of Christ the distinctiveness of the righteousness that he offers and also like them we're we're on the same pilgrimage we're in the middle of it and often we're struggling with the, the situations we faith face and sometimes we want to uh, give up and so his message of persistence in faith is really helpful to us too because we are walking in the same path we are walking after those who've gone before us including the people to whom the book of Hebrews was written including to all those people in you know faith's hall of fame that preceded us and persisted in faith um, we want to follow in those steps wonderful yeah may we also be faithful i think this um study is challenging and encouraging and like you said i think it does this wonderful job of connecting the dots from the Old Testament to the New Testament for us um, on this side of, of, of the cross and the resurrection. So thank you, John. Thank you for um, taking the time to set up the study for us. And so I encourage you all to join us. If you, um, if you are just popping into this video and wonder what we're talking about um, today in the word is a monthly Bible study um, and you can access it free. You can download it as an app or um, get requested as a daily email, or just visit our website at todayintheword.org. So thank you so much, and thank you, John. Thanks, Jamie.